Hello there DCS pilots. With the current hurricanes battering Florida area, I was wondering, can you actually use weapons in DCS if conditions were to be like that? The reason I've actually done away with the clouds so we can actually see the weapons clearly. I've got the winds up as high as they will go. You can see here just based on the trees exactly what's going on. I haven't edited in any sound. You can hear the winds there really blowing. And although it may look like I've got a fast forwarded sim based on the smoke coming off this vehicle, trust me, I do not have it fast forwarded. This is actually what is happening with the smoke with the current wind conditions how accurately can we hit the ground targets i hope you enjoy this one oh, look at that it stopped burning at long last and the smoke is still up there looks like a portal into the next dimension i'll tell you what it is a portal into the next dimension here we go all right so here we are approaching the target and you can see from the heads up display just what kind of winds we're dealing with and if we take a look over onto the hsi we can see that we've got true air speed of 580 knots and increasing, whereas our ground speed is still under 500 knots. So that right there, we've got about 100 knot headwind. And we'll come over to the weapons page. And the first one down is going to be the GBU-24. And we're in zone 3, 2, 1 and fire. Or oh, pickle. Bombs away. Maintaining the climb. And let's come now down and have a look at the bomb there she goes and look at that she's crabbing nicely target down there at the beginning of the runway just under the fins listen to that wind <laughs> the wind from the actual blowing is louder than the wind from the missile uh, from the bomb holy moly look at that that is not a fast forwarded uh Oh shit. Can we do that again? This time we'll be using over there the 2,000 uh, pounds INS guided weapon. The timer for the J84, the 2,000 pound J dam is almost up. And there we have it. Target acquired there on the right hand side, the T72 tank this time. And uh, this time we'll give it a nice good loft. We'll see how she behaves in the sky. She's already saying that we're in zone. You can see the flight path marker off the side of the heads-up display. There's the weapons release. Just focus in on the weapon. And once again, that insane strong wind blowing in there from the coastline. You can see our previously destroyed target still burning down there. And here comes the AE, the JDAM 84, I beg your pardon. We'll release the camera there. And that one actually, ever so slightly missing, not taking out the tank despite landing just yards away. Again, I guess it could be a slight... I oh, don't know, if we take a look there, we can see I was actually aimed for the tank, not uh, just to the side. So you can see actually there the wind's already having em enough of an effect to save a tank. Some people are saying, why don't you use the infrared mode? Well, the truth is, if I do, it more or less turns invisible for now in the Hornet. So we're going to have to stick with the camera mode. And just so you do see that, there's the flare mode. Very difficult to see. There's the camera mode. So for now, just uh, CCD is the easier way. Now let's come over to the UFC. Quantity, let's select two. Interval, let's just say five feet. And yeah, weapons are ready for release. Let's go ahead and try. This is actually going to be insanely difficult to line up the bomb fall line when it's off the side of the screen. That's about as close as I can get it, guys. Three, holding the weapon release down. Two, one. That's fairly accurate. Up we go. There go the bombs. Basically holding hands. Let's release the camera. They are close. Oh my goodness. I never, never thought a pair of unguided weapons would be bullseye like that. Well, I can't take any of the credit there. That was entirely down to the uh, release point. Let's see if we can pick up a target. There we go. It's a BMP on the end. And let's go again there, making the turning on the Maverick sensor. Coming over to the right screen, I'm just going to reposition that target coming over to the left now and the sensor there uncages and 
and there goes the Mav and you can see it battling the crosswind let's release camera and no problem at all so I would go so far to say the only weapon that slightly had a problem was the INS guided weapon which actually is a surprise to me I would have thought that one would have probably had the least trouble out of any of them okay this time we're taking on two SA6s and an Estrella at the SA9 infrared using nothing more than our air to ground gun uh, we'll see if these guys uh, can get a good lock on us and get a missile off despite the winds so far they're electing not to shoot let's go ahead and turn the uh, ECM on why not bit of a mystery why they're not shooting coming around again oh shit he's shooting he's shooting flares are out whoa that was close more flares coming up i tell you what the way that those tails just run away it becomes really difficult to see where did that missile even come from I mean, what is that guy even shooting at over there? He's seen, all right, another missile coming up. Oh, that was so close. There's another one. Okay, that uh, should him be out of uh, infrared missiles now. Coming in hot. At least once you know the uh, infrared guy is dealt with, you can forget about your burners for a bit. Alright, up we go. Coming in again. coming in now then for one more attack let's get some height because we're starting to run out of rounds here I do wonder why the uh, SA6 guy is not even bothering to fire on us at all he's not even locking us up Look at that wind blowing us across the target area there managed to take one of them out there I think that's actually the, the <laughs> look at that fireman i told you i wasn't playing it fast forward look at the way the smoke is just blowing across the field coming around Wow, look at that smoke. It's like you have hit an oil rig. That isn't... I've never seen smoke like that. And I know someone's going to say, well, duh, you've never played with wind like that. I know, but even so. Taking shots, taking shots. All right, I think that's going to do it from this video. I think that one there proves we can use the gun to kill targets. Missiles can come and kill you. You can still be very lucky 
You actually get a bit of assistance from... Look at the sea, by the way. Oh, my goodness. I have never noticed the sea like this before. Look at what is happening with the sea. And, uh... Guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but this actually looks like the water is 3D. This doesn't just look like a picture of waves. These actually look... Right, that's the uh, bonus piece of content for those of you that have stuck around. Are these waves actually fly throughable? If that's even a word. Can we fly through them? Radalt says we're still 10 feet. We're actually flying through some of these waves, these 3D waves. That's absolutely insane. Go on. It's actually really hard to get the right height. But there we go. Look at that. Let me try and get that in the F2 view. Oh, so close. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now officially possible to fly through a wave in DCS as a side effect when you've got a hurricane storm. I've really enjoyed making this video. Look at that smoke. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Until next time, guys. I mean, look at the crazy craziness here. Let's go ahead and open this. Do you know what? As a doubly bonus bonus. Wind's blowing us sideways big time. Right, guys, thanks for watching. That's going to be it for me today. I hope you had even just half as much fun watching that as I did making it. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.